The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. If I feel convicted about a possible sin against another believer, but if the other believer is not feeling offended, is it a sin in God's eyes? Does sin have anything to do with how someone else feels? What does this have to do with false guilt and other things? Thank you for joining us today on Grace in Focus, this ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. We are so glad you are with us today. And please know that you can know more about us by going to our website, faithalone.org. You can also give to this ministry on that website. That's faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. Welcome to another episode of Grace and Focus. This is Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. Which one are you? Oh, I'm, I'm, hi, Ken. I'm the K-man. You're the good looking one. Yeah, I'm the good looking. I'm the young guy. Hey, oh, you're also the young guy, yeah. <laughs> and we're here at the illustrious GES headquarters, and we are continuing our discussion that we had in our last podcast concerning if I could speak in general terms, forgiveness between believers. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of our listeners had a number of questions, and uh, Bob, you got one that we weren't able to address. All right, and I want to commend Ken. He's got a sweatshirt on that says, has the Greek phrase, keruxon ton logon, 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word. And I say, amen. That was the motto of the seminary that Ken and I went to. They've kind of adopted a different model today, but I really like K. Rooks on Ton Logon. Okay, here's the other question from Barry. If a believer feels convicted about the way that he or she treated another believer and thinks that he's sinned against this other believer, is that offense necessarily sin in God's eyes? So he's saying, you know, well, he even gives an example. Sometimes my wife asks me to forgive her, but I say, there's nothing to forgive since you did not offend me. So is there such a thing as a person feeling guilty for something they shouldn't feel guilty for? No, I think so. Absolutely. I mean, well, sure. There's people who feel guilty about things that are not sinful. So say, for example, that I say something that hurts your feelings. And what I say is true, and I'm not saying it in a hurtful way or anything else, but you get your feelings hurt, right? That happens with spouses all the time, doesn't it? Right, in the example that he gives there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't mean that I've done something wrong or my wife has done something wrong. It just means this is something we need to work through, Right. right? Yesterday, you're visiting with us. I'm sitting on the couch, and Sharon bought 122 stinking dollars for some this one little powder thing you I think you saw it it had a teeny bit of powder and it was like 30 some dollars and she got like four things like this and I was like 122 dollars are we made of money now she didn't take offense she laughed partly because you were there but partly because she knows I'm going to get bent out of shape if she spends two dollars on some pudding or something you know i'm pretty i'm pretty uh old school in that regard plus she was fixing dinner so i said i think it was great that you bought that i thought that was yeah uh, <laughs> thanks for backing me up on that but the truth is let's say that she had spent the 122 and uh, you know i was slightly bothered and i said something and she took offense Well, I might apologize to her, but it's not like I've really sinned. Right. I just expressed, hey, that seems like a lot of money to spend for some makeup, and I'd rather hear and not wear makeup anyway. I like the natural look. I don't like, you know, what do you call it, mascara and all these things. But okay, Sharon's exploring these things. But anyway, you know, there's lots of times where I think we have false guilt. We may say something, the other person gets their feelings hurt, but we didn't really do anything wrong. In fact, maybe we have said the thing they really needed to hear, but it still upset them. Right. Right. So you spoke the truth. Yeah. I mean, a person could speak the truth. In a loving way. Right. You speak the truth and people can get offended. Yeah. Right. Just because a person is offended doesn't mean that you've sinned. And just because a person is not offended doesn't necessarily mean you haven't sinned. That's exactly right as well. So... What we need to do is base our understanding on Scripture and let the Holy Spirit convict us based on Scripture, not based 
on, in many cases, our flawed upbringing. I grew up in a home where my parents loved me, but my dad was an active alcoholic, and there was a lot of perfectionism and a lot of yelling and a lot of things. And as a result, I tend to feel guilty for a lot of things I shouldn't feel guilty for, right? I'm too perfectionistic. If I don't do something perfectly, I'm feeling guilty about it. Well, you know, what God calls us to do is to do our best. And if I do my best, let's say I I make some mistake here at the office and it costs GES some money. Well, that's too bad, but it doesn't mean I sinned. It's not like I went out of my way to cost us money. And sometimes we make bad decisions that cost us money, right? Right. Well, that doesn't call it sin. And so uh, I would suggest that Barry's question is right on the money. If a person feels like they've offended you, and they come to you and say, I'm sorry, and you say, no, you haven't offended me, they should accept that. This is where the military comes into play here, because in the military, you learn, if you, at least my experience, you don't get offended by things. You get used to it after right. you've been in a while, you know, and so... Yeah, we don't, maybe hold grudges. Maybe that's the word we're talking about here that, yeah, sometimes people might hold a grudge that even when no sin was committed. All right. Well, I think you've got a question that's unrelated, but a question from uh, GA, is that right? Yeah, uh, initials are GA, and I'm going to have to read a little bit between the lines. What he asks is, if a person has never heard or understood, or I would also say believe, well, if he didn't hear and never heard, understood, he couldn't believe it. But if he's never believed in Jesus for, and that's in quotes, for everlasting life, but they believe the biblical verse that says that Jesus said, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life, would that person be saved? I think what G.A. is saying is this. Do we have to believe in the promise, or can we believe on Jesus, even if we don't believe for everlasting life, we believe on him? would, Because he gives the example of people who believe that you must trust in him as Savior, and the one who died for our sins was buried and rose again. So, Yeah, uh, he talks about a couple of preachers, we won't mention their names, right? but who teach that if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose bodily from the dead, and as a result, he's your Savior, well, then you're born again, even if you don't believe you're saved forever. Right. If you just believe you're saved for now, right? right? And you might lose it in 10 minutes, but you believe you're saved for now because he died and rose again. These two preachers would say, okay, you're born again forever. Yeah, Even so though you don't believe you're born again forever. Right. And what GA is saying is, wouldn't that be what Jesus meant when he says, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life, even if he doesn't know it? Right. And the answer would be no. Right. <laughs> and we know that because all through John's gospel... He stresses that everlasting life is everlasting life. As Dr. Ryrie, one of our seminary professors, loved to say, if everlasting life could be lost, it's got the wrong name. And Jesus repeatedly linked everlasting life with the opposite, which is never hungering, never thirsting, never perishing, never dying, never being cast out. And so the point is, everlasting life lasts forever. He said, He who lives and believes in me shall never die. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst, and so on. And so it's wrong to say that if I believe in the deity and death and resurrection of Jesus, I'm born again even if I don't believe it's permanent. Some people call that flexible free grace. Right. What we believe is focused free grace. After all, we're called grace in Focus, right? It's Grace and Focus podcast and radio. And so the point is, in 1 Timothy 1.16, Paul said, I'm an example of those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. In John 3.16, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. It's the guarantee we're never going to perish. So if I believe that maybe I'm going to perish, but at least right now I'm okay, I don't yet believe John 3.16. Right. And this this verse that GA is referring to, 
where Jesus says, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Well, in the context of not just that verse. That's but the, the King James of John 6, 47. Right. right. I mean, it's the, in the whole context of the book of John. What does it mean to believe on him? Believe on him as the Christ. He's the Christ who what? Gives eternal life. <laughs> to the one who believes in him. Yeah. Right. And so this idea that I can believe on him. And, and by the way, G.A.'s question is a great one because when you listen to evangelistic messages, there's all kinds. Believe in him for that he died on the cross. Believe in him that he rose from the dead. Believe in him that he forgives you of your sins. Believe in him that he was born of a virgin. Believe in him that he's coming again. Believe in him that he's going to have an eternal kingdom. Well, people can believe all those things, but not believe on him for eternal life. And they believe they have to work. Okay, I believe that about him. And now I've got to clean up my life and I might make it into heaven. Right. A lot of people hold to what I call lordship salvation or other people. And I like to remember it was COP for a, a policeman who's very legalistic. Right. He follows the law. C stands for commitment. I need to be committed to Christ. O is obedience. I must follow through on my commitment to obey him. And P is perseverance. My commitment and obedience must persevere until I die. A lot of preachers will teach that if you believe in the deity, death, and resurrection of Jesus, then you're saved for now. Or maybe they'll even say you're saved forever, even if you don't believe you're saved forever. But that's not true. You're only saved forever when you believe the promise of everlasting life. So GA is asking a great question. And by the way, if you have questions about this, I would urge you to read the Gospel of John and pray about it. See if this isn't so. We've got hundreds of articles on assurance of the essence of saving faith on our website, faithalone.org. We've got lots of videos at our YouTube channel, YouTube Grace Evangelical Society. And we discuss this a lot in our podcast too. the, the, The bottom line is, what do you believe Jesus for? What are you believing in him for? And if you're believing in him for good health or prosperity, that's not going to give you eternal life. Or even I believe in him that if I live a godly life, I might make it into his kingdom. That's not what he promised. (laughs) That's exactly right. In fact, that's work salvation. That is the false gospel of the Judaizers in Galatians 1, 8 and 9. Yeah. Well, great question, GA. And for all of our listeners, remember, keep keep grace grace in in focus. focus. Are you interested in finding other Free Grace believers just like yourself in your area? Well, you can do that by going to our website, faithalone.org. On our website, we have a church tracker. It's an easy-to-use map that will help you locate those other Free Grace churches that might be in your area. It's at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. There are a lot of costs involved in staying on the air. That's why we so much appreciate our financial partners. We would love to hear from you. Maybe you've got a question, comment, or some feedback. If you do, please don't hesitate to send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode of Grace in Focus, do we have free will to come to Christ? That's next time, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.